from nuclear physics As the name suggests, the strong force or the strong interaction has binding energies of the order of about 10 million electron volts. So the strong interaction is stronger than electromagnetic ones. And as we talked about before, their binding energies are on the order of about 10 electron volts. So they're about a million times stronger. And every day, electrical situations protons do not as well as neutrons participate but only electrons do. However, only certain electrons are available to play. And this is where we're headed. We need to talk about what are these electrons. So what I need to do is that I re really need to describe what do I mean by an atom before we get there. So how does one describe an atom? So there's, there, are, there are definitely models, and we should look at some of these models here. So one of the earliest models is the Rutherford model of the atom. This model is a planetary model with a planet like electron circles a solar nucleus. Now this model that Rutherford came up with was in 1910, and he immediately knew that it was a bad model. So the question, why is this a bad model? Electromagnetism shows that accelerating electrons emit electromagnetic 
radiation. So it's emitting energy. And because it's emitting energy at such a high rate that, um, okay, so electromagnetism shows that accelerating electrons emit electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation and quickly, what do I mean by quickly? In the order of 10 to the negative 11 seconds, crash into the nucleus. That is the atom ceases to exist very, very quickly. Clearly, this is not a good model. So picture-wise, what we're really saying here is that if I have a nucleus, let's say that this is my nucleus right here, and of course, we know that the electron, in this case, is circling the nucleus like a planet-like thing. So this guy is moving here. But as it moves, it's moving in a circle, which means it's accelerating. And because it accelerates, its path decays very quickly and crashes into the nucleus. So why does it do that? Because it is emitting electromagnetic radiation. So it emits radiation, which then decreases its radius and it crashes into it. That's why it's not a good model. It can't describe what is going on. Another uh, bad model of the atom is the Bohr model. So the Bohr model essentially makes the same claims. The Bohr model is essentially a Band-Aid on a cancer sore. So what you find here is that in this model, electrons also circle the nucleus, just like the Rutherford model, but for some unknown reasons, electrons do not radiate energy away. However, it still has electrons moving in circles. However, so, but what's important about the Bohr model is that the Bohr model gave the idea of energy levels. And this is the big thing here. And these energy levels led to the idea of quantization of energies. So the Bohr model gave the idea of energy levels and had some success in describing
the hydrogen atom spectrum. So picture-wise, it says something like this. So if I have a nucleus here, Bohr says that these there can only be certain orbits that the electron can make. In other words, these orbits turned out to be quantized and they can only occur at certain locations. So this would be the first orbit, this would be the second, this would be the third, and they were called orbitals. Now you can translate this picture into energy levels. And when you do here, you find that you can have energy levels that look something like this. So this would be one, two, three. And then right here is effectively the nucleus. And what you're finding here is that electrons live in these energy levels and they're able to jump. So that means one electron can jump from here all the way, let's say, down to there. But the key point here is that electrons live in energy levels. And that was a big change. Some people call, you know, old language, they call them shells. But the language is actually energy levels. Old language is also, they call them orbitals. But they all effectively have the same type of language. So <clears throat> the model that best describes the behavior of atoms is the quantum model. Without any doubt, this model describes the position of the electron in a probable listic manner. However, pictures from quantum mechanics arise in how electrons are bound to nuclei via potential wells. we will use these potential wells as our pictures of atoms and molecules.
So one of the things that I, I feel like I have to address with the Adams, because there is a misconception that I have to clear up. So I'm going to say that I feel the need to clear up a misconception about the atom. Many sources, sometimes textbooks, especially chemistry textbooks, also I've seen some YouTube videos claim the atom is empty. Let's look at why some sources make this claim. So, what is empty? So we have to think about what do we mean by empty? So one analogy that we can use is that we could use a long half course hole. So when I imagine a golf course hole, one of the longest um, Holes here is 500 meters. So let's look at that. So you could imagine that this is our tee off area right here. Okay, so this is where people tee off from. And then somewhere in the distance here is our golf cup. So but in between, we imagine that there's nothing in between, right? That's what we mean by an empty golf course. So remember, there's no trees. And then right here is our golf cup. So if I think about the longest ones, they're on the order of 500 meters from here to the golf hole. So if I look at what do I mean by empty, I could take the diameter of the cup, divide it by the length of the fairway. And it turns out that this is roughly about 100 centimeters. And this guy's about 500 meters. So this is of the order of 1 and 10 to the 4. That's what, so I'm going to say that that's a good definition of emptiness. 1 and one in 10,000. So now let's apply the same type of thinking to an atom. So how empty is the atom? So I'm going to focus on the hydrogen atom. Because it's the easiest. So when you look at the hydrogen atom, now remember, I am not saying that this is the Bohr model here. I'm just saying that the diameter of this looks something like this here. So I'm going to get 
my nucleus. And then I'm going to say that this guy right here is the size of my atom. So in other words, the electrons, the first energy level electrons, let's say is going to be that in that shell, right? The first one right here. So when I look at the size here, we could see here is that this distance right here, this is the diameter of the atom. And so if I look at the diameter of the atom, it's about 10 to the minus 10 meters. Now the diameter of the nucleus varies a little bit. And what we're gonna see that if I look at the diameter of, of the nucleus, it's gonna be of order of 10 to the negative, excuse me, 10 to the negative 14 to about 10 to the negative 15 meters. So now if I look at the same ratios before, if I look at the diameter of the nucleus to the diameter of the atom, you can see here that this number, that the biggest that it could be, let's say, is 10 to the negative 14 meters divided by 10 to the negative 10 meters, and that's about one part in 10,000. So when people talk about the emptiness of the atom, we can equate that to the emptiness of a long golf hole. Okay, so in other words, empty is comparable between a long golf hole to the emptiness of an atom. Unfortunately, this is not correct. And Rutherford's gold foil experiment clearly showed that the atom is not empty. So the way he did this is that he shot alpha particles at a piece of gold foil. So what is an alpha particle? So if I look at an alpha particle, this is a nuclei ion, which has two protons and two neutrons. Okay. So picture-wise, I could imagine that an alpha particle is, is a helium nuclei with its electrons being stripped here. So this here is an alpha, which is a plus-plus helium ion. So it has an electric charge. 
So what did Rutherford's experiment do? Well, what it did here is it had a high energy alpha gun. So this right here is our alpha gun and it's shooting alphas. So this is our alpha gun. And what it's doing here is that it's shooting these very, very intense ions with a lot of energy. So these guys are positively charged and they're coming in at really high speeds. And what you'll find here is that over here, there's this very thin gold foil. So right here is the gold foil. And if you've ever played with gold foil, it's really easy to tear just by blowing on it. So it's a very delicate thing. But this is what they found here, that some of these ions, as they came to the gold foil, some of these would actually get re, they would get um, shot right back and come back at 180 degrees. So in other words, a lot of these alpha particles would go right through the gold foil. Some of these would hit something very dense and it would come back flying back. So the word hitting is a very misleading term. And we have to ask the question, what does that mean? But this is what led to the discovery of the nucleus. So here's what Rutherford's quote was. And it's one of my favorite quotes in all of science. Famous quote about this experiment. He says, if you fired a 15 inch shell, and this is what he means by the alpha particles, at a piece of tissue paper, and this is what he meant by the gold foil, And it came back and hit you you'd be most shocked by the outcome. Imagine that, shooting a bullet at a piece of tissue paper and it coming back at you and hitting you in your forehead. That would be unbelievable. So what actually happened? Well, back then they did not know that there was a nucleus, but no, it doesn't change the results. So the question is that why was this alpha particle being deflected so strongly? So here we have a alpha particle, which is a positive helion ion, and it's being shot. So when we look at the gold nuclei, the gold nuclei turns out to have a lot of positive charge on it. And because it has a lot of positive charge, what you'll find here is that this thing puts out this enormous electric field, electric force field. 
And so this here, this is the gold nucleus. And the blue here is, this is an intense electric slash magnetic force field inside the atom that surrounds the nucleus. So as you shoot this alpha particle, the two positive charges cause, if you're right on target, they're going to cause it to deflect. So if you're saying that, that the atom is empty, that's incorrect. And we could conclude here that the charged alpha particle was strongly deflected by intense electric forces that repelled it. Once again, the atom is not empty.